hi welcome to my channel this week i start school again for the spring semester and i thought it'd be cool to do a week-long reading vlog today is monday the 16th and i actually don't start until wednesday the 18th so i have like two days to just chill out and get some reading in and i actually already started today it's like 2 p.m so i've already done some reading today i'll let you know what my reading is looking like in a second i have some plans for this week obviously i have classes wednesday and thursday actually just wednesday and thursday because i don't have classes on friday this semester so i only have two days of class this week and wednesday is not too packed not too busy but to let you know my reading plans right now i'm actually in the middle of throne of glass by sarah j mass everyone knows this book obviously very iconic seven book long series but i've actually never read it before this is my first time reading it and i was like around i was reading i was watching booktubers when this book came out when the hype was real and i've tried starting this book like two maybe three times but if you don't know this book is a high fantasy series about an assassin who was enslaved and then she's brought into this competition by a prince and his captain of the guard or whatever they bring her into this competition to be the king's assassin basically but i'm 143 or 142 pages in i'm on chapter 20 but i will say starting off this book was quite difficult i started it yesterday and i got like i ended up getting 60 pages in throughout the day but i read like 20 pages at first and that was really hard to get through. I find Selena incredibly annoying and it, it wasn't a uh, pleasant reading experience starting the book and her being like this sassy and arrogant and annoying and I don't know. It, it wasn't fun. And I found the writing to be kind of hard to read. There were some parts where I just like was not entirely sure what was going on. Like I couldn't really picture what was being described. So I had to like reread a few times and it still was hard for me. But after like 40 or so pages, I finally was like, okay, like I, I understand, I can read this now. And now that we're getting introduced to more characters and the competition has actually started, I read through the first test and I literally stopped right before the second test. But if I don't read any more of this today, I will actually pick up The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. So this is the first book in the Mistborn trilogy and I've heard so many things about the series. I've heard so many things about Brandon Sanderson as an author and I've just been wanting to read his books for a really, really long time. I actually read more than half of this in like 2021. I can see where, how far I read because I left my bookmark in for the two years that I put this down and I got like 346 pages in, but I I think I was in like a reading slump when I started reading this and I hadn't really read a lot of fantasy and I still haven't read a lot, but I've been reading it more now. So like after Throne of Glass, I will have read like three fantasy books in a row, YA fantasy, but still like I'm trying to get into fantasy because it's a genre that I'm like really interested in and I'm enjoying reading it a lot right now and it's just like a goal that I have for this year. But I read like a lot of this book and I actually really enjoyed it. And I liked the magic system that was being described a lot there were some like training scenes that i found like really really fun and engaging and i just want to like get back into this world like ever since i decided i was going to pick it up again i've been thinking about a lot of the stuff that i read and even though i don't remember a lot of it like because i'm going to start over i'm going to start from the beginning going to start fresh i'm just like remembering little things like i know i'm remembering vin i'm remembering like a ball i'm remembering just like the training sequences and the magic in this world is really interesting it has to do with metal and like it can like <laughs> i know you can kind of like fly with the metal i don't know you can like push there's like push and pull and stuff like that i can't explain it properly because again i read half of this two years ago i don't remember it that well but i know the main premise of this series is what if the dark lord won it's like a big thing that is marketing this book like on the back it even says what if the prophesied hero had failed to defeat the dark lord so it's just like kind of the aftermath of like the chosen one trope that went wrong if the chosen one didn't actually succeed and i find that really interesting um like thinking about that a lot but i found the world interesting there's a lot of ash in this world there's metal allomancy is like the magic and mistborn are either people who can perform the magic 
or they're like special people who can perform the magic and can like work with all the metals. I don't remember. That's something that I'll find out again when I read this. But I, my issue or what I'm struggling with is I don't know if I want to read two like high fantasy things at the same time. So I might just try to continue with this. Now that I'm actually in it, reading through it is a lot easier and I feel like I could read through it a lot quicker now. Those first 40 pages were very hard for me to get through and I literally, I was also pretty tired yesterday. That's another thing. I kind of wasn't in a big reading mood, but I think I'm doing better. I'm doing better. So I read about like, I've already read like 80 pages today and it wasn't that, like it wasn't that grueling. It wasn't that difficult. I didn't like struggle through it that much and I'm being introduced to some characters that I'm starting to like. So I potentially will just continue with this but if I finish this early this week, I will absolutely be picking this up. I've just been really itching to get back into this world. I think I wasn't in the right mindset for it. Obviously, I could be wrong and I could still feel like, yeah, it was okay, but I'm really hoping to like love this book. Anyway, those are my plans for this week. I'm 142 pages into Throne of Glass right now, so I'll talk to you later. So I didn't get to properly update again last night or yesterday. It is now Tuesday. But I went to Barnes & Noble yesterday, as you saw, and I did a little bit of reading with my sister. We were sitting in the living room and we read for a little bit. That little, like, Gillian Flynn little book that I showed called... I don't remember what it's called, but the little the little book that I showed. My sister ended up buying that. It's like a Gillian Flynn, just like short story. I'll probably read it at some point. I'm not gonna read it now, but she decided to start reading it. And I read like... 30 pages with my sister and then I ended up reading about 20 more right before bed So I'm on chapter 27 on page 199 So I'm basically 200 pages in but I did read a little bit more and I just kind of wanted to talk about a few things I actually have some stuff. I'm gonna be doing a little bit later I'm gonna go to the library and return some books, but I have a few thoughts I just want to say I have like no interest in the romance in this book. I don't I don't like Dorian. He's the prince like at all like I don't necessarily I guess I don't dislike him but like I don't like him like he's just kind of annoying and he's just like there and my main issue is literally no one has chemistry with anyone Selena doesn't have chemistry with Dorian and she doesn't have chemistry with Kale Kale I don't freaking know how to say his name but I just like there's like no reason really for any of them to like each other it's all just physical attraction like Selena just kind of feels compelled to look at Dorian every time they're in a room together and she like smiles and laughs at some of the stuff that Kale says and none of it is very there isn't a lot of depth to it and there's no actual chemistry between the characters like there's nothing that's really like propelling their relationships at all and I have no thoughts and no well no I have thoughts I have no feelings whatsoever for the couples I guess I kind of like Kale better but that's just because he's like the slightly better one out of the two of them some stuff has been happening with the like magic in this world and the fae I find it kind of interesting that Throne of Glass is set in a fae world I guess I I think I kind of knew that because I know some things that happen in this series actually I know a pretty big spoiler I think it's kind of fun to see like some sprinklings for what's to come if I continue with the series but I just like kind of wish it wasn't necessarily Faye like I kind of wish there was just like a totally new mag not a new magic system but just like a different magical element to this world. I, okay, I never really read a lot of fae stories growing up or like in high school or anything like that, like when I was a teenager. So I don't have an attachment to fairies 
at all. I read the Cruel Prince trilogy and I liked it. I didn't love it like a lot of people do. And I read A Court of Thorns and Roses. I didn't really care that much for A Court of Thorns and Roses. And I'm actually reading through the Dark Artifices series right now, the Cassie Clare trilogy, one of her Shadowhunters trilogies, of course. I've only read Lady Midnight and there's a lot more Fae stuff in that trilogy than there has been in like other Shadowhunters trilogies. I've only read The Infernal Devices and I'm reading The Last Hours, like I'm caught up with The Last Hours. But I, I like the Fae stuff that's actually going on in the Shadowhunters world. I think it's really fun to follow those, or follow that world. And I don't know why I'm not really vibing with it here. I honestly was thinking this earlier. I think if I read this when I was in high school, I would have hated it. I would have written one of my scathing reviews talking about how Selena's annoying as heck. And I just would not have liked this book. And I'm pretty adamant about that. I don't know <laughs> if I'll like it now. I don't know. That's another thing is we've kind of like skimmed over the last few tests we've really only seen two of them and then we've skimmed over a couple of them something that i find kind of funny actually no something i find kind of annoying about the writing sarah j mass loves to use an exclamation point and i think she needs to cool it i'm sure she does cool it because i heard that she started writing the series when she was 15. it shows but there are like so many ellipses in her writing and it's actually really really annoying because she will literally just like end a sentence with ellipses and it's just it's like this annoying thing where she doesn't really want to say what she's trying to say but i, I don't know it's like weird so let me see Ugh, i'm trying to find like an actual one well first of all there's one on this page i turn the page one another one on the next page two more on that same page and then, are they writing on this page? No. But I've seen like so many. Like, please relax. Like, okay, here, this line. This is like slightly a spoiler, but I don't think it matters that much. This book has been out for however long. So there have been some murders going on. She says, but if there was a threat like that, then not only her life was at risk. And while she'd be more than happy if some dark force somehow destroyed Kane, Parrington, the King, and Caltaine Rompier, it's if Nehemia or even Kale and Dorian were somehow harmed, dot dot dot. Yeah, you could finish that sentence and say she would be upset, or she doesn't want that, or just like write it differently. Like, I don't know. There are like lines that just very much irritate me, and that's just how I am feeling at this moment. So I'm 200 pages in. I'm gonna do some more reading a little bit later, but I think I'm gonna get ready. We're gonna go to the library. I'm hoping to read about a hundred more pages today and then maybe a little more than that and then I can finish this up tomorrow. I just like want to get through this now, <laughs> like where I am. I just want to get through it because I'm really excited to start The Final Empire. So I will get back to you soon. Hello. So I'm about to go to the library. Let me show you what books I am returning. Well, one of them I didn't get to read, so I'll show that first. That is Suburban Hell by Maureen Kilmer. This was the book that my best friend and I were going to buddy read together and then we decided to do Throne of Glass instead. And I read like 25 pages, wasn't really feeling it honestly. It's also just like not at all what I'm in the mood for. So like maybe I'll come back to it at some point in the future, but it's not what I want right now. Then I have, I have Lady Midnight, which I actually mentioned earlier this one. The dust jacket is not like taped on like library books normally are. I took it off while I was reading, so it was really annoying because it kept sliding off. But Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. This is the first book in the Dark Artifices, Artifices trilogy. Her series set after the Mortal Instruments, which I never read the whole series. I only read the first book and like half of the second book. But after reading The Infernal Devices, which I absolutely loved, and then Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron, which I also really love, I decided I wanted to pick up some more Cassie Clare, and I enjoyed this. I definitely think her books set in the 1800s in London are like top tier for me, but... I'm gonna read Lord of Shadows, I'm gonna read this series, see how I feel about it, even though these books are massive. I gave this four stars, by the way. I think it's actually more like three and a half. Then I have Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This is the last book that I actually finished right before Throne of Glass. And I was really loving this. I'll talk more about it in a wrap up probably, but I was really loving this, but I it kind of fell off a bit in the end for me. So I ended up giving it four stars and I that's still like really good. I just thought it would be like a five star read. Let's get going and then I'll show you what I pick up. See you in a bit. Okay, I finished at the library and 
actually ended up with more than I was expecting. Okay, I put two books on hold. One of them I was trying to cancel my hold on yesterday because I was like, I'm not going to read this now. And I still don't think I'm going to read it, but I didn't end up, I accidentally like closed out of the app before I could cancel the hold. And it just didn't go through, I didn't realize. But that is House of Earth and Blood, Crescent City, book one by Sarah J. Mass. I put this on hold. This book is freaking huge. I put this on hold before I decided to pick up Throne of Glass just because I was like pretty curious to see like what this book entails. Um, I know it's more like urban fantasy and I was kind of trying to see if maybe I would like that better from Sarah J Maas since before I had only read A Court of Thorns and Roses. Now obviously I'm reading Throne of Glass but I haven't even finished it yet. But I do not think I will get to this massive book anytime soon. Especially with like the books I'm planning to read. There's the map. I could have just left it and then like suspended my hold, but I'll hold on to it for now. But I really truly don't think I'll get to it. It's like 800 pages. I have a bunch of other big books that I'm trying to get to. I also picked up another book that I probably won't get to either, and that is Elantris. I couldn't remember which one I decided on. I was deciding between this and Warbreaker because this is his first book that he ever published. I obviously want to read Mistborn slash The Final Empire first, even though, I mean, a lot of people say to start with that, but I could obviously start with his first book, but I've already started Mistborn like way back when, so I think that would be better for me, um, but I was deciding between Warbreaker because that's also another book. I think it's a standalone. I could be wrong, but that's another book that a lot of people say to start with Sanderson, so I was considering it, but looking at both of them, they both actually were really, like, really intrigued me when I was reading the synopses. Elantris sounded slightly more interesting because it's about this, like, beautiful city with, like, these magical and mystical creatures who are, like, beautiful and magnificent and they shine like the city. But there's this thing called the Shout and it, like, turns the whole city kind of, like, makes the whole city like desolate. It says Elantrians become wizened, feeble, leper-like creatures and Elantris itself dark, filth, filthy, and crumbling. The Shoud became a curse. So that just sounds really interesting just to see this like beautiful city become really filthy and crumble and all those things. It just sounds like super duper interesting but I don't actually know if I'll be able to get to this because my next book I'm definitely gonna read soon and that is Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare. That's because I already started the series, so I want to continue with it. But I don't know. I kind of, you know, the library is just like a fun place. We'll see what I can get to. I also am technically in the middle of the secret history. We won't talk about that. All right. Someone's about to walk past, so I'm going to say bye now. Bye. sure how much reading I'm gonna get done today. It's the first week of the spring semester. It is now Wednesday. I didn't update that much yesterday because I actually ended up being pretty busy and like doing some stuff with my mom. I'm sorry I'm literally just watching Felix. I ended up doing some stuff with my mom and I read a bit. I didn't read as much as I wanted to. I read like 70 pages. I'm on yeah page 271. I'm on chapter 36 now. Excuse me? Um, he just knocked over The Last of Us Part 2, and I watched the first episode of The Last of Us last night, and it was so good. I literally cried. I literally cried. The beginning of the show was just like the beginning of the game. It was like literally perfect. Okay, this isn't about that, but I just had to say that. But I read 70 pages of Throne of Glass last night, and I'm enjoying it a bit more. Some stuff has actually happened that I actually quite liked. There was something with a test that I really liked. I just thought it was like really good, really interesting. The other characters in the competition aren't super important, except for like Knox, because he's like her closest friend in the competitors, but they're not really that close and he's not that important. Like we focus a lot more on the prince and the captain of the guard. And then Nehemia, she's important and I really like her. She's a character that I'm like enjoying and I enjoyed their first scene together so much. I thought that was like really, a really good way of introducing her character 
because I immediately was like, oh, I like this. I like, it made me like Selena a little bit more too, even though I still don't necessarily like her, but I liked her in that scene. Also, something just happened that I'm like, yeah, this is a fake out. But I'm just like, I'm intrigued to see what happens next. I really don't know if I will continue with the series. I kind of have to see how this book will end. I just like don't see myself getting that, getting that super invested, getting that invested in this. I actually want to talk about this because Sarah J Maas has a lot of like controversy surrounding her whether it's like actual like problematic issues or just her popularity obviously there are going to be people who hate her books and hate her writing and then she's popular because a lot of people love her books and love her writing if I had just read Akotar from another author who wasn't as big I probably wouldn't have given her another chance but because she shoved in my face so much, I'm like, okay, I'm interested to see what Thorn of Glass is all about, even if I don't like it. And it's, it's an interesting, it's interesting. I don't really know what to make of it. I just think that's like one of the really interesting things about like really popular authors is I just like want to understand the hype. And so far I haven't, but I still want to read Crescent City. Like why, I just want to see what it's about. All of her books, I've been like, all of her series, I've been like, I just want to see what they're about. Like why do people love it so much? And I haven't been that impressed personally. And I think the difference between my interest in Crescent City and my interest in like Throne of Glass and Akotar is Crescent City and House of Earth and Blood is like, I feel like a different kind of controversial. Like people who don't like Court of Thorns and Roses, yeah, they don't like Court of Thorns and Roses, but then people love it and then people love that series. I feel like House of Earth and Blood is like kind of really mixed even with people who love SJM. And I find that interesting. So that's why it intrigues me because I think a lot of her fans like it, but then a lot of her fans kind of are like, it's not my favorite work of hers. But the premise does intrigue me. The only thing is I don't think I care about Faye. <sighs> I don't think I care about Faye that much. And I also just don't think I care about Faye the way that Sarah J Maas does it. Another thing is Cassandra Clare. Like she, oh God, I gave her a lot of chances and I didn't really like love her for a long time. I read City of Bones and then half of City of Ashes twice in my life. I read it for the first time when I was in middle school. I read the first book and then I started the second book and then I got about halfway through and then didn't finish it. And then in high school, I wanted to try Cassandra Clare again because she's popular. She's talked about so much. And I did the same thing. I literally reread City of Bones and then I reread like half of City of Ashes and I did not want to continue. I like did not care to continue. But then years later in 2020, I read Clockwork Angel and I still didn't love it. And then a year later, I read Clockwork Prince and then I loved it. And then I understood. And now I love the Infernal Devices. I, would, I read Clockwork Princess immediately after, loved it. Now I've been reading The Last Hours. I love it. And now I'm reading through The Dark Artifices and this is like, okay. I enjoyed the first book enough that I'm gonna continue with the series. But I don't know. It's just like, I keep, I give these authors chances because I just want to understand the hype and sometimes I just don't understand it. I think with Sarah J Maas I will probably just read the first books in her series and like see if I find something in them that I like. I feel like Crescent City I have has like the biggest chance of grabbing me or like being the one that I like. Throne of Glass maybe the other books are better but I don't think I want to delve into a seven book series with a main character that I don't even like. I don't know, that's just like a really, really random tangent that I just wanted to go on. Cause I've been thinking about it and I'm sorry I haven't really been updating super like regularly throughout my reading. And today I'm not sure if I'm gonna get that much reading done cause I'm really just trying to set myself up for the semester. I just need to make sure I stay on top of things, but I'm 270 pages into Throne of Glass. Talk to you later.
Thursday and you know what that means I'm 312 pages into Throne of Glass so I actually did some reading today I didn't do any reading yesterday it was just you know it was a stressful day it actually wasn't that stressful but like first day of classes I was trying to get situated you know I didn't do any reading so I just kind of accepted that I wasn't gonna get any reading done yesterday but I got some reading done this morning right before my first class and I think I'm gonna get a little more reading done now before I have to leave for my next class. I will be leaving in like two hours so I'm hoping to get like an hour of reading in and then I'll be very close to finishing Throne of Glass. I'm very excited. I have less than 100 pages left so I'm hoping I can get, you know, 60 pages read right now and then I can read the last 30 sometime tonight but we're definitely getting into like the climax something just happened that is definitely important but you know didn't really mean that much to me to be honest i didn't really care that much so i'm just gonna try and power through this because i've been thinking about it and i'm kind of mad at myself for not just starting the final empire when i really really wanted to because i was in such i was so in the mood for this and i'm still in the mood for it like i still am excited to read it but it would have been like so perfect if I just started the book right when I was in the mood for it. But of course I was like, no, let me do Throne of Glass. Like it's YA, it'll be easy to get through. Thankfully, Throne of Glass isn't like super long where I'm able to just like finish it. Like I can finish it today, but I really just want to get into this. This could potentially start today, probably more so tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to start this today because I'll probably just finish this today and then I can start this tomorrow, especially since I don't have any classes going on tomorrow. I'm just, I'll be chilling. After my class today, I might go to Barnes & Noble and just like sit in the cafe and try and get some work done, just like get some readings done for my classes like next week. Just like get ahead of the curb, get ahead of everything, you know? But yeah, I was able to read about 30 pages earlier. Uh, maybe a little more than 30 pages. I think I read more like 40 pages and you know, some stuff happened. Did I care that much? Not really. Some stuff in the romance like progressed and I literally felt nothing. And something important just happened and it's kind of just passing me by. I apologize, but this is not, it's nothing for me. I'm probably gonna end up returning this book to Barnes & Noble, to be honest. I will talk to you a little bit later, hoping to finish Throne of Glass today. I'm literally just gonna update super quickly because I have maybe like 25 pages left in throne of glass and i'm so sorry felix look at the baby he's so precious i'm not gonna be able to finish it right now because my eyes are drooping and i have to leave for class in 30 minutes so like i have the time 100 percent, i have the time and i just i don't know why i just don't feel like finishing it right now i'll try to finish right after class i don't know either i'm gonna stay on campus and try and get work done there or i'll go to like a barnes and noble and do work at a cafe but i literally am almost done i'm just not gonna finish it right this second i just wanted to let you know that so i will be updating you later so after class i 100 percent have time to finish this and hopefully get some like school stuff done so let's hope that that happens i will let you know <laughs> and then this will be started tomorrow because then after i finish throne of glass and do some schoolwork i'm probably not going to feel like reading and then tomorrow i'm off i will update you guys later hopefully when this bad boy is done and over with and i will look for my receipt and i will return it <laughs> it's been a time it has it's been a time say goodbye to felix my cutie he's so precious look at him look at him, look at him. I love him so much. Um, I finished Son of Glass. These are the thoughts. These are the thoughts that I have. So it is Friday. It is like 3, 4, 5 p.m. Wow. A few hours off. Um, but it's 5 p.m. I have not updated today. I apologize. I've just been, it's been a pretty low energy day. But I have exciting news. But I finished. I freaking did it. I finished Throne of Glass. Thankfully, it didn't take me a week to read and it didn't take me any longer than a week. It took me like five days to read this. It's two stars. I may return this to Barnes & Noble. I don't need to own it. I have no use for this book anymore. I don't think I'm gonna read any more of these books. I think I'll try out House of Earth and Blood. See if I like that one. See if I'm more intrigued by that series. But it's definitely possible that I will not be, um, and that I will be done with Miss Sarah J Maas. I just 
have no interest in Selena. Okay, let me go over my thoughts. So, like I said, I gave it two stars. One star is for Nehemia, one star is for the competition. That's it. And the competition doesn't even deserve a full star. Whatever, I'll get to it. But I wrote down all my thoughts. Basically, Selena, she was so annoying. I did not like following her as a main character. She got better throughout the book. Like, the beginning made it so hard for me to read the book because I really didn't like her. She's just very arrogant, which, like, I understand having a lot of confidence or being very cocky, I guess, especially since, like, she's very established in this world. She has a reputation. But I'm gonna be honest, it was a lot of talk and no walk. We saw some of her strength sometimes, but it really, like, it wasn't that often. And something that really annoyed me was, at the especially at the beginning, she would talk so freaking much. Anytime she was in a new room, anytime she was anywhere, she would devise an escape plan in her head, but then, like, never go through with it, which, like, I understand, like, that she's not supposed to be going through with it. But I think if you're gonna have so many moments of her, like, thinking of ways to escape, you have to show it at one point. Show her actually succeed or actually go through with one, because if I keep seeing her talk about it, I just think she's not capable of it. Something else that was like kind of frustrating for me is like she always talks about her strength and like everyone knew knows Selena Sardathian, whatever, she's a famous assassin, but we really know nothing about how she like amassed her reputation. Like I don't know what she's done in, as an assassin to be that famous. Like who has she killed? What what like missions has she been on that have been that like famous or that impressive when i was writing down my thoughts it made me think of jamie from game of thrones he's literally known as the king killer he he's not an assassin but he has one very famous thing that like gives him his reputation and like he literally killed the king that's very impressive and very like shows his strength shows how capable he is and selena there was like nothing for that there were none of her kills that were like famous no one ever mentioned anything in particular there was nothing very impressive that she's done that was actually mentioned she was just famous she was a young female assassin sure i get it but she has to be famous for a reason not just because she's a female assassin or a young teenager she needs to like do something impressive that would propel her to that kind of level of fame there's also the possibility that like her fame and her reputation is expanded upon in other books. I'm guessing maybe the Assassin's Blade, but it doesn't work for this book to not contain any of that because it doesn't make me want to read more. It doesn't make me like Selena. It doesn't intrigue me at all. So those are my thoughts about Selena. She took up a whole post-it because that's just how strong my feelings were about that. Next, the romance. I've talked about it. There were there was no chemistry between any of these characters. Selena had no chemistry with... I forgot their names. <laughs> Selena had no chemistry with Dorian. She had no chemistry with Kale. There were no reasons for her to like them, for her to have any feelings for either of them. Like, there was literally nothing. Right from the beginning, she felt some sort of pull towards both of them, but there was really no reason for it. And it just, like, kept being the same thing over and over again. There was no reason for the guys to have feelings for her. I'm sorry, she did nothing besides be attractive. I don't know. That's all I'm gonna say. Neither of the men had anything going for them. They, I could barely tell the difference between them, to be honest. Next, the competition. This was one of the only things I cared about. And it wasn't even, it wasn't even that prominent in the story. We skipped over so many of the tests, which there were like a lot of them, 13 or more, maybe more than 13. I don't really remember. Like, I don't even know because we didn't focus on them that much. And the competition, the actual tests, were pretty boring. They were pretty like basic. Some of them were like interesting. Whenever those scenes happened, I was like a little more engaged and I found myself reading faster because I was actually interested. Even though there were still like, there really wasn't that much depth to them. There, there was nothing new. There wasn't anything interesting. There were no like moving parts. They were pretty basic. There just wasn't a lot of focus on the actual tests and it didn't, it just, it wasn't enough. We skimmed over a lot of them and that was one of the only things I cared about. Like, come on, Sarah, come on. Next is the friends. 
another part that I actually did enjoy. Nehemia really, really liked her character. I mentioned this, her the introduction scene with her and Selena, I actually really enjoyed. I liked their dynamic. I liked the, I just liked what was going on between them and the reason why they were able to kind of form a connection pretty quickly. Uh, it was like believable. It wasn't anything like, in Sebesties. But I, I enjoyed it and I enjoyed Nehemia throughout the book. Nox, um, one of the other competitors, I liked him as well even though there really wasn't like too much going on with him. They were interesting. I just liked the friendships. I think they were cool. The magic. It really didn't do anything for me. I just liked the magic was there. It was there. It really wasn't very intriguing to me and I don't think it will get more intriguing. I don't think Sarah has a- I don't think she has much of a talent for magic. I'm sorry, but this brings me into my next, my next point, the next thing that I'm going to talk about because I'm actually very excited because I'm 80 pages into the final empire and I'm really, really, really liking it. I remember stuff like the stuff that I'm reading. I definitely am like remembering it obviously because I read it before, but like I said, I never finished this book, but I'm like giving it more attention and better focus than I did the first time I was reading it. And like now I'm actually like very engaged. And I enjoyed stuff while I was reading it the first time, but I definitely just like wasn't giving it the proper attention. I was just kind of like reading it. And if I wasn't understanding something, I would just like keep going. But now I'm like, oh no, I understand what I'm reading now. I'm kind of a bad reader sometimes, I'ma be honest. But reading this is making me appreciate good magic, a good magic system. The Alamancy in this is so interesting and I'm so excited to dive into it again. I just, I'm also really loving Vin already. I really like her and I'm just so excited to see like where the story goes. And literally you kind of like, this moves fast. I definitely know I wasn't reading it that well the first time because I'm, it's moving. It, th this book is moving. Like a lot is happening. We're getting the plot going. We're getting the, the, the scheme, the plan moving with all of the characters and I'm very excited. And I was so nervous when I was reading Throne of Glass. I thought I was going to fall into a reading slump or I was going to drop fantasy because I was not feeling Throne of Glass and it kind of made me a little demotivated to keep reading fantasy right now but I know that I want to read it right now so I was like let me just start Final Empire and then this morning I started it and I like couldn't put it down I read like 40 pages and I was like hello I love it I love it give me more and then I read more and I'm enjoying it I'm so excited to keep reading it I don't really know what to do about my copy I could keep mine but I don't really know why it looks so like banged up it like came to me kind of banged up. I like it. It's, it was a new copy from the book depository. So I don't know if I should order the slightly newer copies and covers like the UK covers or if I should get the new US covers that are coming coming out next month. So we shall see, but I'm very excited to keep going with this. I kind of plan to read a little bit more today, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to. This is probably the last, this is the last day for the vlog. I'm not gonna go into the weekend, but I'm gonna see how much more I can get read today. I'm hoping to hit 100 pages. I just think it would be good to like get myself really into the story right away on my first day reading it. And I'm excited to read more. Can you see Felix? <gasps> you can! My baby cute Hi gorgeous man! Hi gorgeous boy! Hi beautiful boy! Oh he's loafing. Let's go look at him. Let's... Oh he's so beautiful. You're so beautiful baby! He's really stunning. He's really stunning. I have no other words. I think that's it. I think that's it for updates right now. Um, I'm gonna do some other stuff. I'm gonna do some other stuff today and then we'll see how much more I can read. What if the Dark Lord won? That is the question. <sighs> okay, I think this brings us to the end of this vlog. It has been quite a week. It's actually been pretty a pretty good week. I'm feeling ready to take on this semester, but I'm also feeling good because I completed a book and I started one that I'm very, very excited to continue with. I actually reached 100 pages of Final Empire and I'm still really liking it. Of course, I only like 15 pages later but i'm just i'm excited to continue with this story and see where it goes but i'm definitely going to continue this throughout the next week very very exciting i'm in my fantasy era i'm getting it going two high fantasy reads in a row even though i haven't finished this yet thank you so much for watching i hope you had a good time watching me struggle through 
throne of glass with my my notes my thoughts i'm hoping to finish this hopefully in the next week and then we'll see what i pick up for the last few days of january i need to be done by the 31st for chain of thorns but yes thank you so much for watching um this is my first video so if you watched this whole thing tell me what your what book you're excited to read by the end of this month but also just like let me know what you thought of the video let me know your thoughts like subscribe i'm hoping to come out with some more videos and i will see you in my next one which i hope will be fairly soon